How's it going, everyone? It's Andrew from MAO Magic, and I'm here with the G4 Platinum, as well as the uh, receiver with share built in. Uh, we're going to set the sensor aside, and we're going to start just with the box. And I want to apologize. This is going to be a long video. This is the longest of them. I'm going to break this up into a few different sets. But in this video, we're going to show you the hardware. We're going to show you how you set it up. We're going to show you how you put it on. We're going to show you tips and tricks. We're going to show you the Apple Watch app, the iPhone app. We're going to show you how it syncs to the Health app. We've got a whole host of things to show you. We're going to compare it to the N-Lite sensor. And again, all these are going to be broken up. Uh, into separate videos uh, later, but right now we're just going to do everything, one long video, complete everything you need to know about the G4 sensor. So let's go ahead and just open it up and see what you get when you first purchase the Dexcom G4 sensor. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Obviously, we have a lot of manuals, a lot of information here. And I want to point this out before we get too far into that. This is not a medical video. You should not trust this. This is not training on how to properly use the sensor. This is just to help you make a decision on which uh, CGM unit is best for you. So if we look at the receiver itself, there's one big difference with, like, say, the N-Lite, which goes straight to the Medtronic pump. This actually requires the separate receiver. It's a fairly basic unit. There's a reset button on the back that'll reset the communications if it ever has problems uh, communicating with the sensor or with your phone. Uh, there's simple material here on the front to cover the screen. There are speakers built in, so obviously if you are going low, say in the middle of the night, it can start beeping wildly at you, telling you to wake up, <laughs> you're going low. Uh, so there is a lot of basic stuff like that. It has a rechargeable battery, so it just has a built-in lithium-ion battery. There's a little slider on the side which is probably the cheapest feeling part of this entire thing. It's a really just, it's a cheap little slider using a standard micro USB cord. It comes with a micro USB cord as well as a charging cable, but really you can use any cable to charge it as well as any wall outlet to charge it or the one on your computer. Uh, if you are syncing this with something like the Dexcom Clarity software, make sure you do use the included cord because it is more than just a standard power cord to power a phone. This actually is transmitting data which requires extra pins than a standard or than like, you know, like the cheapest little charging cords. You do have a little case that comes with this thing, and I this is this to me this is this is useless. Uh, it's very clunky. It's kind of hard to to clasp together. There is like a belt loop thing on the back, but it's like too small to cover like a belt. Uh, I'm not sure. There's probably a market for this, and if this is something that's useful to you, it's great that they've included it. But to me, it doesn't look very good. It's hard to use, and it just looks like it looks dated to me. Uh, so this is not something I particularly am going to be using. But if this is something that, that you would like. It's great that they have it in here. Some of those, all those clips they send you when you get like a Medtronic pump. I never use them, but they're very nice uh, for the people who may need them. So if I could actually get this out of here, let's go ahead and move on. So we've seen the receiver that we actually have to use to use our CGM unit, our constant glucose monitoring unit. Let's check out the sensor. Uh, so the first thing to note is this is a completely sealed sensor. So this is all complete, compact into one little guy. Uh, it is not rechargeable, such as the N Light sensor from Medtronic. This it's, uh, you throw it away basically. After six months, you should get about six months of straight usage out of it. At that point, they will send you a new sensor, and you just go ahead and activate that, and you're good to go. It is fairly small. I mean, they're, how do you really judge the size on these? Um, when you first take it out of the box for the first time, there's a little magnet in there that kind of keeps it turned off. And as soon as you remove it from there, it's immediately activated. So you just take it out and it activated for the first time. It'll give you a six months of constant usage. On the back of it, you simply have that pairing code to pair it to your receiver and to little contacts, which is going to help it transmit your blood sugars to the receiver itself. Obviously, this is completely sealed, so it is waterproof. You can wear it swimming in the pool, uh, in the shower, anything like that, and you're not going to have any problems. Even though when you are in the water, it is going to have a little bit reduced range, down from the 20 feet that it normally has. Here is the, your instrument that you're going to be used to insert your sensor, to adhere your sensor to you. Uh, it has a little plunger on the top, has a little thing and you go through the whole thing it's very easy but it is kind of a big package like it is a giant bag that you have to kind of carry around when you are swapping these out but it is nice that it is one self-contained unit and you don't need like an extra insertion thing you have to carry around so here we have an actual sensor i went and put it together so we can see what it looks like we have the adhesive around the edge it is pressure sensitive and you do want to start at the closest to the sensor and just push out and brush out and make sure that there are no uh, overlapping areas as you're adhering it as you can see on the bottom, there is that slight, uh, it's really hard to see, it's super tiny, but there is the piece of metal that's going to be in there that's actually your sensor. That's what's going to be helping 
that's what is this is what this is doing this is reading your blood sugars and that is the little piece of metal that's going to allow that to happen you cannot feel it i felt this is extremely comfortable and this is personally more comfortable than the second generation end light sensors from medtronic this is also at an angle compared to the ones from uh, medtronic that are straight in once you go ahead and remove this if you remove this after yourself which is uh, it'll last seven days uh, but once you do remove it uh, you simply kind of unhook those edges, which is a little bit finicky to try to get it off. I keep going back and forth. I'll get one side, and then all of a sudden the other side of the sensor is like back on again. You keep going back and forth, uh, but it's not too bad to remove it from the actual uh, mount itself. Now, the adhesive is not great. I guess it'd be my biggest problem, the end light sensors do come with like a piece of adhesive to put over top of it, uh, but these uh, Dexcom sensors do not. I use this Opsite FlexiFix, uh, whatever kind of adhesive tape that you want to use, any medical grade tape uh, will work just fine. Uh, if you want to know how I go ahead and adhere this, which has proven very well for me, it'll keep it on there uh, easily that seven days that you have going, is I simply roll out some of the tape. I will use some small nail scissors or anything small because you are going to cut like a center out. And there are other ways of doing this. So I'm here you're just using this tape, uh, but you actually can buy little hole punches in like, not hole punches, uh, but like cutouts, maybe for like scrapbooking, it's like a, a tag shape. And a tag actually pretty much fits right over this. So if you just Google uh, like punch for Dexcom C4 tape or something like that, you'll easily be able to find it. But they're available on Amazon uh, for 6 to $10. I felt I don't need to spend 6 or $10. I've got tiny little scissors. I can cut out a little square myself. Uh, but if you have a children or you want to not carry scissors with you when you travel, uh, this is, uh, that is another alternative. So you'll simply put on the sensor site as you normally would. And then you'll go ahead and put this around remove the adhesive one side and just push it on there. No big deal and it keeps it on there for easily that full seven days. Now we're going to go ahead and look at actually inserting a sensor. Uh, there's several different spots you can do it. You know, your abdomen, legs, um, lower back, back of your arm. There are many different spots. We're just going to go here right on the abdomen. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to clean the site with some alcohol swabs, which we've already done here. So you'll go ahead and clean out the site first and make sure it's completely dry. You can fan it a little bit if you'd like. Uh, but once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and remove the safety lock by simply pulling outwards. Uh, we will then go ahead and discard that. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the adhesive. Uh, this can be a little bit knacky, I found. Uh, it doesn't always come off easily because you don't want to touch the adhesive at all. If you touch that adhesive, you're going to get oils on it. It's not going to stick to your skin and make it not last that full seven days, especially if you're not using any tape on it. Now you're just going to go around the outside of the adhesive and make sure you push down because uh, it is pressure sensitive. It will stick better once you push on it. Once that is securely put in place, you're going to push down on the plunger, not pulling on the collar. So just pushing straight down. You should hear two clicks once it goes all the way in. Once it's all the way in, you can go ahead and pull up on the collar. And that'll retract the needle, leaving the sensor uh, right underneath your skin at an angle. Once you pull it all the way up, you can go ahead and pinch the front of the sensor and pull forward and it'll pop right out. And that will keep the needle nice and safe, but you should put it into a sharps container just in case. A uh, sensor simply goes in the front, you pull that little lever to push all the way in, you should hear two clicks, and then to simply twist and discard that latch as well. We can then go ahead and add that extra adhesive, if that's something you're going to do, you may not need it, it could just be dependent on the person. Uh, but that's it, now it's on there and simply goes under your shirt and you don't even notice it. If we do want to compare this to the other prominent sensor in the market, which be the end light sensor from Medtronic, uh, we can do that now. You can see here is the uh, Medtronic sensor. It looks kind of like a seashell shape here. Uh, it is pretty much about as thick as the end light, but it is uh, rounder. Uh, one big difference, it is rechargeable battery. So it is not a just use it and discard. You just have to put it onto here pretty much every two or three uses. Uh, you go ahead and put it on here, which just has a uh, a AAA battery inside, and that just charges it. It makes it kind of annoying because you have to carry this charger around every time you have your sensor, so that's just another thing to add to your diabetes bag. You also have this applicator, which is very nice. It's got a nice grippy outside. You simply put it on, press the button, it just shoots the, the sensor right in, and then you pull it off. It's very smooth, and I love how they kind of put this together. Um, but however, you do have to carry an applicator around. So I guess pros and cons, it's, I feel like it's easier to put in, but another thing to carry around. And that does make the sensor go straight in compared to the end light sensor here, or the G4 sensor, which is an end angle. So the end light sensor is straight in 90 degree angle, whereas the Dexcom G4 is at an angle.
Now there are a lot of pros and cons to each. I do like the end light because it has the applicator, which is super nice. I like that you have to recharge it and you don't have to actually carry around like that receiver as well as replacing your sensor every six months. Uh, but there are cons to it. It's maybe not as comfortable. There's not nearly as much range. Uh, you don't get that share functionality. Uh, so there are a lot of pros and cons, but I do prefer the G4 sensor 100% over the end light sensor from Medtronic. If we take a look at the receiver again, now that we have the sensor turned on, you can see there's the battery and Bluetooth connectivity in the top left-hand corner. You can see the blood sugar in the top middle as well as the trends. You do have to update your blood sugar every 12 hours, so it'll be about twice a day you calibrate your sensor. Uh, even though it's not required, so if you don't do it, it's not going to just shut off compared to the end light sensor from Medtronic, which does turn off if you don't calibrate it every certain uh, amount of time, which I believe also is every 12 hours. If we go into the settings, you can see there's different profiles for the different alerts you get. You can change the different event. You can add different events for exercise, insulin, etc. Since this does not sync to any pump, you can customize your alerts to get those how you want, as well as delay them for a certain amount of time. There are different settings. Obviously, you can change the time date share settings that it connects to your phone if you're using share on here. Uh, and speaking of share, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is very neat. This is on the newer receivers here. And this is basically what allows it has Bluetooth connectivity, which just connects to your phone. So in this case, I have my iPhone here and it just pairs up to my iPhone using the Dexcom share application. It shows me my blood sugar right on my phone. You can use share to follow or have other people follow you, which is fantastic for families and children. You can basically have this on there and you'll get alerts and see how their blood sugar is doing remotely. So this is a great way to keep an eye on people, um, you know, kids upstairs or kids at camp, anything like that, or just a loved one that has diabetes that you want to track. This also syncs up to the health application as well. So this just syncs right over here to the health application, which means you can use any number of third-party uh, diabetes tracking apps, such as OneDrop, and it'll automatically pull in that data from HealthKit and show it all for you. So here you can see all my blood sugars. It's put in about every five minutes. If your sensor ever does disconnect from your phone, it'll give you an alert after 15 minutes. So if it doesn't receive any blood sugars for 15 minutes, it'll give you an alert. So this should always be pulling in your data and let you know if it ever stops. Now let's look at my favorite feature of the Dexcom sensors, which is the Apple Watch sensor. Now there are stuff using like the Night Scout, um, third party stuff to work this onto Pebbles and other watches, but I absolutely love being able to see my blood sugar right here on my wrist. There's a full application that'll show you how your blood sugar is trending, as well as a glance. The glance is probably the easiest way because you can simply swipe up, and when you go into it, it literally looks the exact same. So the glance and the actual application on the Apple Watch are identical, but this is probably my favorite feature of the Dexcom sensor itself. If we go ahead and round this out with a nice long pros and cons list, on the pro side, it's a very slim minimalistic profile. Uh, it has no need to charge, so you don't have to worry about carrying a charger around or anything like that. You have that share functionality, which is great for children and families, uh, so you never have to worry about them going low or too high without you being able to take action. It has an Apple Watch app, and there's the Night Scout third-party one that'll put it onto a pebble. It has trends, so it shows you where your blood sugar is heading, so if it's heading up or down, and you can take action before it gets too bad. It has a really good 20-foot range, which is much more than uh, many other sensors out there on the market. It is waterproof, so you can swim, shower, everything within. You won't have any problems. It has a really nice seven-day wear time, which is above many others out there on the market. And it's not too bad for travel. All you need to do is pack an extra set, and you're good to go. You don't need to take a charger for the sensor, as well as not needing to take that applicator tool. If we go ahead and take a look at the con side, first up, you must carry that receiver. This is probably the biggest con for me that I want to carry that extra receiver around when I already have a phone, a pump, and everything else. You do have to put another hole in yourself at the same time. So many people don't want to have one hole for their sensor as well as another hole for their pump. It's just more holes on their body and that can compound over time, leading to you know some hardness of the skin, which could be bad. You don't get alerts on your phone or watch, so you don't get that high alert or low alert right on your wrist, which would be super handy. There is no auto insertion tools like on the Medtronic sensor where just one button. This could be a little bit harder for children or people who are skittish against needles because they actually have to go and put that needle in themselves. It doesn't talk to the pump so you don't get that full picture of your insulin, your basal, your bolus, as well as your blood sugar over time. Insertion can be a little bit difficult because you can maybe not get to like that angle that you need, especially if you're going to mount it behind your arm. Whereas like on the Medtronic one, that little button, simple press, boom, done, easy to do. There's no custom complication on the Apple Watch, which is a bit of a bummer. You still have to use your other hand and open up that glance to view your blood sugar. It would be really nice if you could just see right on that watch screen uh, what your blood sugar is without having to do anything. 
and you still need to buy a new sensor every six months. I mean, they will send it to you, uh, but you do have to replace it every six months. You don't have that option to just recharge it and just keep going. We've covered a whole hell of a lot in this long video here. So if you have any questions at all, there's anything that I did not cover, make sure you throw it up in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so I can keep these videos coming. Other than that, I guess I'll see you guys all next time.